Buenas a todos, aquí estamos en el Jardín del Atlántico y vamos a, usted va a poder observar que voy a hacer una entrevista en inglés porque obviamente es necesario, ¿verdad?, en este tipo de casos. Así que más adelante estaré explicándole eh, sobre esta entrevista. Eh, your name is? Iris Duran Sejo. Where do you live currently? Uh, prior, I came to uh, Aguadilla from New Orleans, Louisiana. What brought you here? I came for two reasons. One is that throughout my life I had never gotten to know my own culture personally and its history. So I wanted to I wanted to become as close to the traditions that my family upheld and I wanted to finish a dream of mine which was to write a novel. Oh wow. That's great. And you really completed your dream of writing a novel? I'm editing my novel now. I've been offered uh, um, a retainer, but uh, something happened in the mix of that. What, what, what happened? What really happened? What happened was uh, when I came to uh, rent this apartment and read, I make a point of reading anything before I sign it, like anyone should, and I was denied uh, hot water for almost two months and a half. When I replied to the when uh, I went to the administration, I was denied an appointment, which is the first time that that's ever happened to me by a professional. And they said that they would the administration, Yosenia Miranda said that they would fix it when they got the equipment, which could have been from now to two years from now. And so what I had to do was, her tone was somewhat arrogant. And if nothing else, it was demeaning. So I called the, uh, I excused myself and called the uh, mayor's office. And I was given Frank Hernandez, and I explained to him that I didn't come to Puerto Rico to be treated like a, a third world citizen. And that hot water was essential to my way of life. Did they do anything? In 45 minutes, Mr. Hernandez came. Not only with water for me, but for the whole, uh, a truck full mm -hmm. of water. They fixed it in 45 minutes, and Mr. Hernandez said, Okay, Iris, now you've got hot water. I hope everything's okay. I said, No, it's not okay. Because how am I going to, how am I going to conduct business with an administration who is inaccessible to whatever complaints I may or may not have? It's impossible. And he goes, so what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to go downstairs and speak to the administration. And I spoke to the administration, and I said to the administrator, Yosenia Miranda, that she had no right to refuse me an appointment, that it was unacceptable to have no hot water, and that she actually admitted to me without any sense of shame that there were more than 45 people in this building, up to 60 who had no hot water, for unbelievable lengths of time, was okay with her. When these people are elderly, may have situations, pulmonary situations, or muscular situations that demand that they do not take water, uh, a bath in, in uh, cold water. That was the tip of the iceberg, though. What I found out later was that allegedly some of the staff was robbing some of the, uh, of the residents who had, who had Alzheimer's, who could not defend themselves, who had no proof but knew that they had been broken into because all it takes is a piece of plastic to open the doors that we have. So you, you really are, for sense, you are unprotected correct you don't have any any security no, whatsoever in our contract in our contract it says we have 24 we're supposed to have a 24 hour guard seven days a week oh my god it's never ne never happened we didn't have an intercom up until uh, two and a half months ago and it's still not working properly and the reason we have an intercom now is because when people call a hospital or an ambulance, how are they going to go downstairs and let them in if they're sick? So in essence, at night, 
We are in a jail. In regards to that final comment that you just made, what is the role of the local government or what has been the role of the local government in regards to this in regards in regards to every this situation uh, okay let me first say that we were we were validated because hud housing and urban development which is an agency of the cabinet of the united states accepted our our case of discrimination behind them is the aclu what we did the process by elimination we went to the uh, departamento de vivienda mm -hmm. we went to the departamento de familia we went to every agency locally and they did nothing we went contacted the mayor and the mayor said that he had no jurisdiction to do anything which strikes me very strange because there is a fiduciary agreement between people who live in a town and their mayor. Mm -hmm. And their mayor is supposed to look out for their best interest. How are the best interests of people over the age of 55 served when they have no hot water? Because an apartment is not functional without hot water. Yet we pay for it. The other thing is, is that we have been bounced. Had we not gone to the federal agencies, we would have been bounced from agency to agency, agency. to agency timelessly. And I even had one, I will not mention her name, I even had one department head of an agency tell me that they had enough to shut this building down but they had no place to move, move anybody, which was a total lie. Oh my God. So what, what would you like to, to see happen? I'd like to see a legal federal precedent set where the administration of any low income building has to have accreditation. Whether a university um, uh, uh, university um, uh, accreditation, or um, um, by right of whatever program they're supposed to be administrating, because right now what you have is people put in a situation of an administrator by way of a nepotistic system, which is if you happen to be a friend of mine, I'm going to give you this job. That's how everything works. That's why we need to change everything that is well, going on right now. I, I am very proud and I'm very honored to know Yvette Mejia because she not only strikes me as a highly intelligent, well-versed, well-mannered, well, well compassionate human being, but a person who politically economically and humanistically wants the best for her people in Aguadilla. There is no excuse and she knows it. There is no reason why Puerto Ricans cannot mandate the best for themselves. We do not need outside federal forces to show us how to behave for each other's benefit. I thank you so much for speaking out of your heart. That means a lot to me. I thank you so much. My pleasure, because now, I'm, now I, I don't feel like I'm on uh, trying to climb uh, Mount Everest in skates. <laughs>